capture is already a complex beast at times, specifically for myself as I analyse frame rates, image quality and more from it. As such, the highest and least affected capture is not only important, it's vital. Things have moved fast in less than the last 7 years, with 4K 120fps HDR and now variable rate refresh. The overall cost requirements and complexity have become much larger in a short space of time. As such, the HD60X is something of a jack of all trades in this minefield of game capture, with a very unique and pioneering feature. It can accept and process a VRR signal within its capture. All this from a small desktop device that plugs into your USB 3 port. Is this the very best capture card for 2022? Let's find out. Now, when I started my channel, the options for capture cards were mostly industry professional and having lossless capture was a core requirement. Although hard to manage due to the lack of fast hard drive technology at the time, RAID was my mode of choice, mostly by necessity. But that was a 1080p world and we've moved far beyond that now with 4K consoles and PC boosting that four times throughput. However, Elgato have been at the forefront of pushing this into the mainstream market and for streamers or YouTube channels, they offer a complete suite of options. The latest card I have been using for the past month or so, I've been working with Elgato on their VRR options as well, certainly on their capture process, and I've managed to integrate this into my capture analysis here. So expect a deeper dive into VRR in this review and more to come on the channel. But first, let's hit the core features of this card and just where it fits into the Elgato range and potentially onto your desktop. Now the HD60 can process and pass through fully native 3840 by 2160 at 60 FPS in HDR. Now pass through means your main display will still receive this output no matter what the capture is doing. But at the same time you can choose to capture this feed as true HDR at that same 3840 by 2160 but at 30 FPS or capture at 1920 by 1080 p at 60 fps again in full HDR, or the third choice is to capture this at 2560 by 1440 at 60 fps. Now this will be tone mapped back into SDR automatically within the capture process. The simple choice from that 4K Elgato capture software or others makes this really simple to use and you can use other capture sources such as OBS. It's incredibly simple to configure and means you will get to set it up and play at the best quality on your screens whilst choosing the most appropriate capture quality be that 1440p 60, HDR or even native 4K. In addition, the unit can process much faster frame rates than 60fps. In this modern world of the PS5, the Series X and PC, that's become a growing requirement. Supporting 1440p at 120fps or even 1080p at 240fps pass-through means you can still run at ultra-fast refresh rates but downsample this into a 1440p 60 or 1080p 120fps or even 60fps capture or stream for your audience. This option to plug your setup through the Elgato and still choose modes beyond its capture level is brilliant. Now in addition to testing the latency from this at 120 FPS I saw no impact to latency or at worst sub 4 milliseconds which is the limit I can capture from that external screen. So you can rest easy that it does not come at the cost of input lag when you do. Now these options and supported levels already put this as a great solution for hooking up to your console and PC and just leaving it in situ even if you're not capturing. But the VRR support is a real win here. Offering the choice to play and pass through at 4K60 with VRR turned on, yet still capture at 1440p60, makes this a capture card first. And it has enabled me, whilst working with Agata on their HDMI input monitor within their 4K application itself, to output at a variety of sample points and then feed this into my frame rate tool. As you can see here, I can capture the frame rate levels using this and include them next to my captured analysis. Now this will not work below 48 FPS and as such, if the frame rate drops below this, then the Elgato tool will not show anything below and just revert back to 60 or 120 FPS. 
my LG C1 on-screen VRR display, we can see the accuracy of the capture and how VRR works. More specifically, where it works, works best, and where it improves the viewer's display and fluidity. I do have a much deeper dive into VRR coming later this week, but here I will give you a very quick summarized version of it. VRR or variable rate refresh is designed to stop torn frames, be they through runt frames or a tear due to being out of sync with the screen. Predominantly for the last 50 or 60 years, the screens have dictated the pace at which the PC or console could present a new frame. This means that when it runs out of sync, you get a mixture of the old and new frames with torn frames, or you get a partially delivered frame, which is a run frame. Ultimately, in the high level view of this, this presents as a torn frame in screen, which is the old frame and new frame merged together. You can see this red line of the screen example here. And this can then move down the screen or up the screen as the GPU tries to catch back up and get back into lockstep with the screen. Fundamentally, this is what VRR is trying to resolve by allowing the screen to no longer be in control. And the net result is the TV no longer forces the console to dance to its drum. But the range at which this can work successfully is finite, and it will not be the same for every screen. Some can support 144 to 240 hertz, and they'll have a bigger window to play with. But the HD60X here operates in that perfect sweet spot between 48 hertz and 120 hertz. So that's 48 FPS and 120 FPS. This means you can benefit greatly from those games fluctuating anywhere between 8, 12 and a half and 16 millisecond frame times, giving you 120, 80 or 60 FPS. And at 60 FPS, you can go anywhere between 16 milliseconds and 20 milliseconds, which again is 48 FPS and 60 FPS at the top end. For example, around the screens that support it, my LG C1 here supports down to 40 hertz, which means it can drop as low as 25 milliseconds or as high relatively in terms of the times it can flip to the next frame. This means that by using this Elgato HD60X, you can not only get the benefit of passing that straight through to your screen and not having that affect the output, still gaining the benefit of VRR, but you can also use it within your capture process and also benefit from turning off VSync and allowing games to be fixed via VRR. You can see an example here using the Agato tool, capturing it with VSync turned off with Dying Light 2 on the Series S at 60 FPS. The game tears often in these heavy foliage areas, causing the GPU to struggle and then run out of sync, which means we're getting torn frames all up and down the screen, along with some dropped frames. But performance can drop into the 50s, the low 50s at this point. But if we flip over with VRR on, still capturing from the HD60X, we now see all of that artifacting and torn frames are completely removed, as the HD60 still presents you with that cleaned up image and removes those runt frames and torn frames, improving the image quality and maintaining that input latency, again by and large, which is a huge boost. As you can now turn off VSync on your titles and within those defined ranges I've just discussed, play at the fastest, smoothest image on your screen and still present this to your viewers without the unsightly torn artifacts normally present. The fact the capture card does this is excellent. Just bear in mind that even though the screen will be presented with those flips into 20 milliseconds, 25 milliseconds and 16 and so on, the actual capture is fixed. So it's either 30, 60 or 120 FPS, which means although you won't get the benefit of that smoothed out frame rate, you can then replay on a VRR screen, you at least get all those torn artifacts removed from the image. This active monitor the software is using here allows that HDMI 2.1 signal when the GPU tells the screen the frame is ready, this is the number the Elgato output is capturing and you can see that on the left of my graph here. My software is just capturing the feed, the direct feed and calculating that out, that fixed frame rate that has been presented within the capture. And as I've just explained, that means you can get slightly different sample points because the sample polling times and also the capture rate itself is subtly different between the HD60X capture software and my actual captured footage that I'm using within my frame rate tool. Now you can alter that software in terms of how often it captures from up to one millisecond right up to a thousand milliseconds, which means once every second. 
I set it here at 500 milliseconds just to line up with what my capture tool runs at, but I can change both of them quite easily and recently ran through it at 60 or 120 FPS capture, which would be 16 or 8 milliseconds. In short, this VRR inclusion is superb and very simple to use, meaning you can have the device hooked up and still enjoy all the modern benefits of VRR HDR high frame rates with no input latency, which is both seamless and efficient. And I'm sure that many gamers and streamers will want to add this to their setups, if not now, but for in the future for future proofing their options. And that may be much, much sooner than you think. But it's not only the capture options, the simplicity and the VRR inclusion are a huge benefit. It also offers excellent capture quality and that 1440p60 rate, which is around 100 megabits per second capture with crisp details, you can present that clean and sharp gameplay image on YouTube or Twitch. And if the game only runs at 30 FPS, you can even capture and present it natively with HDR included or tone mapped back down if you're using a lower level. The quality here is very, very good and certainly perfect for the majority of the market. I've captured some 4K and 1440p footage here in this video and you can see it here and I've used it already on previous videos. It's very, very impressive with the results here and certainly it makes my capture process very simple and the integration into OBS is as easy as ever. Of note is you will need that to capture 120 FPS. As I say, the Elgato 4K tool is only capped at 60 FPS capture at the moment. In summary, if you're looking to start or upgrade your capture and or streaming setup, then the HD60X is the almost perfect balance between function and cost. Coming in at the same price as the HD60S, £189 or $199 or Euros, that is below the 4K60 Pro internal PC card, which does have slightly higher quality capture, but that does not support VRR at all. The plug and play setup, elegant and simple design and back mounted connections make it a clean and small device to fit into your setup, start improving your capture levels with minimal impact to your workflow and likely a benefit to all of it. It complements the Elgato range very well and with it being the first to market for VRR support makes it almost a necessity for anyone remotely into those faster, cleaner frame rates, better image quality and certainly technology. I would again like to thank Elgato for sending me this device early for review and I'm really looking forward to using it more in my analysis. Those VRR options and benefits across PC and console will really stand out. Just of note, as of the time of this review, the PS5 doesn't support VRR but it is coming in an update very soon later this summer and this card will be ready for that once it does drop. I hope you enjoyed this review. I have, like I say, got a much more in-depth look at VRR across many areas and technologies. So please check that video out soon to complement this one. And as always, if you like what I do here, then please support the channel and everything that I do by liking down below, subscribing, support me on Patreon if you can, and certainly leave a comment and your thoughts and feedbacks below. All of that really helps immensely. And with that, I bid you farewell until the next one. Hi there.